Aren't you glad you're the bride? No guesswork to it. We're the bride. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, he brought me out of the Mari clay. Well, he set my feet on the rock to stay. He puts a song in my soul today. A song of praise. Hallelujah. Second verse. He placed me up on the strong rock by his side. My steps were established and here I'll abide. No danger of falling while here I remain. But stand by his grace until the crown I gain. For he brought me out of the Let's clap it to him one more time. One last time. Oh, he brought me out of the marvy clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He puts the song. You know, they get awful happy at ball games. Big deal. Home run. We're going to heaven. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. You're talking about a home run. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, I pray you're under anticipation, excited, prayed up. Come expecting something very special tonight. Amen. Who's come that way tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. And then you're all going to get an extra special blessing tonight. Amen. Every time we get together is an extra special blessing. Because we're hearing the voice of God. And we're going to hear more all about that tonight. It is so wonderful. There's no such thing as picking a wrong tape. There's no such thing as coming to the church that has said many times and wonder how it's going to be. Oh, it's going to be glorious. <laughs> oh, praise the name of the Lord. I'd like to welcome you to a church where our eyes have been made open and we knew him. And it is revealed to us that William Marion Branham was the voice of the sign. Amen. Lord, you can be seated. That's what brings us here. Yeah. That's because we know that. That's why we press play. Yeah. Hey, amen. We've learned that that voice was so important amen. and so important to listen to that God himself is going to play tapes up yonder in the skies. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey, that, that Lord, that's got to pretty burn up those guys that so don't play tapes, but let's not go there. I mean, God himself is playing tapes in the skies. As they have done in every year past, every in the past in the centuries from the beginning of time, they do the same thing 
in this time as that they did then. <clears throat> as soon as a messenger leaves, Brother Branham said, what do they do? He said, they organize. He said, it wasn't that messenger or when that messenger was there, when that messenger left, they organized. They organized groups of men, he said that they did. And those groups of men, eventually, that they become a denomination. And he says they form groups and then they form a denomination. He said in the Pentecost, he says they become the church of God. Then they become the assemblies of God. Then they become the oneness. Then they become the two-ness. And they broke off in all their different doctrines and all their different ideas. But the prophet of God said that will not happen in the end time. He will not let that happen again. He's got them all scattered. He said there won't be another denomination. He told us they will be identified, though, by their own characteristics. Amen. What they did then, what they said then, they'll say now, and they'll do now. Exactly what they did then, they'll do it now. They'll say, they say. Now listen, you, you can't just listen to that one voice. You can't. There's others that are anointed. There's other voices that are out there. There are other ones that have been called. There's other ones that are predestinated to say something, to do something. And it will take these voices, it will take these voices of these ministries to perfect the bride of Jesus Christ. You have to have those voices. Nonsense! Nonsense! message spoken by God's elected, vindicated pillar of fire. That's what's going to perfect this bride. This is the only thing we need. This is the only voice that we need. That messenger's voice. None of her. So you may be seated. That is the voice of the sign. Amen. It will not be a group. Amen. It'll be one man. Amen. God never did deal with any other way but one man. Amen. Now, Elijah was not a group. Amen. Praise the Lord. John the Baptist was not a group. They were one individual. God, Malachi 4, doesn't say, I'll send you a group. Says, I'll send you Elijah. The word cannot be changed. say groups it doesn't say voices it says Elijah Malachi 4 one man one message will perfect the bride of Jesus amen. Christ amen now Dathan and Korah they didn't say it's like here he goes again you know what the denominations is not a problem to us they're not they're not they're not a problem what they are they're not even close that's that's nothing what they're going to do and that's nothing the pressure coming on the church and saying that you can't buy and sell and the doors will be closed, <laughs> we're out of here. When that happens, we're, we're the bride. We're gone. That means nothing. Trump and his bombs and nuclear and uh, big, come on. <laughs> we're praying for it. Maybe see them. The world fears those things and we want those things. But that's not what it is. These messages come down to, he says, it comes down whoever, wherever it is, there's, it comes down the end. He said, so close. Amen. 
The two hands, Brother Bram said, the two hands, it'll be so close. There's what it comes down to, whatever it is or whoever it is. And as I made the expression, forgive me for saying it, the shoe fits. There is somebody that's there. He said it was there. So that Dathan and Korah, they, they, they didn't say, don't listen to Moses. No, sir. They didn't say. They knew better than that. They knew better than that then. They knew better than to say that now. Because they would have left Dathan and Korah. They would have left that ministry now if they were to say that. They're not going to say that. They just wanted to add their voice to his voice. There's the problem. Their voices to that voice. They want to make the major a minor instead of their message a minor in this prophet. Um, uh, there's a major in that prophet of God, a minor. This message is the major. It's the only thing. Yeah. Only thing. They say Moses is the messenger, for sure. They've got to say that. But there are those other holy ones, and you've got to hear these men too. There's more anointed holy men. Brother Bram says they were holy, and they did have something to say, but they failed to recognize one man message. Their job is to point them to this messenger. Not, I think it says, one man. Not a group, one man. That's what he said. Get mad at the messenger. Praise the name of the Lord. No. They are, that they are another anointed group of men. There are other groups of men, anointed groups of men. And it's true. You see the two hands. It's true. He says that, that we are that group of men. You must hear us too. Is it being said? It's being said. Let's hear what the prophet said. God never did deal with a group. End of story. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. God never did deal with a group. Nowhere in the scriptures he deals with one individual because every man is different from the other. Every man, our thumbs are different. Our noses are different. Our actions are different. He gets one man. He can get him perfectly in harmony till he can become the word. Our prophet was the word. What did he tell us? Stay with the word. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated. There's only one way to make for sure to stay with that voice because the voice never changes. He says men and ideas and thoughts and everything, they change. They're here to get. He says they don't agree with one another. I, I couldn't do it. I just, do I have to go here? Do I have to go here? Do I have to hear this one? I have to hear this one? I hear the message. The tapes never change. Amen. They say the same thing every time we put them on. It never changes. God gets one man in his control and it becomes the word to the bride of Jesus Christ. This message is our fivefold ministry. He was our preacher. He was our teacher. He was our apostle. He was our prophet. He is our pastor. He is the seventh angel messenger. Everything in one. may be seated. Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? And he did. I'm not making it up. 
He said he was a preacher, teacher, apostle, prophet. He was all those things. And then he tells us in the church age book that all of them went astray. But then he sends his mighty angel down to put everything straight in the end time. And we're at the end time. So how important is it to hear that voice? The voice of the sign. That voice is so great. That voice is so important. It's the voice all the way through this Bible. That voice was so important that of that angel messenger that when God spoke it on earth, when that messenger spoke it on earth, I mean, God echoed it himself in heaven. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Would you like to hear the quote? I was counting on it. Why I'm against organized religion. Notice, this angel is the last messenger before the coming of Christ in the 19th chapter of Revelations. The messenger's voice. Whose voice? The messenger's voice. Not other voices, voice. It's the messenger's voice. Now we need to establish, let's know who that we're talking about here. Who is the last vindicated angel messenger? William Marion Branham. So we know who we're talking about here. We all believe that. Okay. If we notice, when he gave his voice on earth, there was a voice echoed again in heaven. Fourth verse, if you want to read it all, all right. Fourth verse of the 19th chapter. This messenger on earth was so inclined with God. Until when he spoke it on earth, God echoed the same thing out of heaven. So the voice of that messenger, William Marion Brown, was so great that God echoed what he said here on earth. When he said it on earth, God was echoing it in heaven. And we shouldn't play that voice in church. (laughs) Praise the Lord. We got the revelation. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's read that first part again because there might be something in there that we might have missed. Okay? Notice, this angel is the last messenger before the coming of Christ in the 19th chapter of Revelation, the messenger's voice. So the messenger's voice of Revelation, the 19th chapter, was the last angel messenger. And whose voice he's talking about in the 19th chapter. Is that correct? Is that what Brother Ram said? Let's read. Get your Bibles. Revelation is the 19th chapter. Might answer some questions here. He said that fourth verse. Revelations 19 will start at four. That's what he said. It was that angel echo, God echoing what he said in heaven. So who are we listening to here? Okay. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And the voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying hallelujah 
for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice. Give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. And to hear and to her was granted that she would be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Okay, what angel are we talking about? Let's continue. Right, blessed are these which are called into the marriage of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. So who was that angel? Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Who was that angel? Amen. That angel was none other than the seventh angel messenger. That's what the prophet of God just said. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, when I read that, when God revealed that to me, it's like we've said here in the church, who else knew the revelation? Who else could have been the angel? But Brother Ranamy says it right there. The voice, the angel of the last messenger before the coming of Christ in Revelations, the 19th chapter, the messenger's voice. So that was that messenger talking to John. He spoke on earth. God was echoing in heaven. And that messenger was talking to John. And John knew it was exactly the same thing. He lived with him. He slept with him. It was his buddy. He looked exactly like him. He said, that's him. That has to be him. They're exactly alike. You ain't going to fool that messenger. He came up and he fell down on his feet to worship him. He goes, don't worship me. I'm that fellow servant. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. the name of the Lord. This message is full of nuggets for the bride of Jesus Christ. It's all right there. It's all there for the bride. He says, what is the fourth, fourth verse translation? What does it mean? God's voice speaking to his predestinated people saying, come out of her. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That just nails it down. What is it? It's the voice Amen. of Elijah speaking to the bride of Jesus Christ. I want to make something very clear because, you know, the skeptics and everything that go off, they say we put too much of a man and we don't worship and all that. The best is to let that messenger answer it himself. In the very day that the Son of Man is revealed, Revelations 10, 1 to 7, read it when you get home. The seventh angel message opens up the seals. What is it? Not an angel is the son of man, but the messenger is revealing the son of man. Can you get it separated now? That's where it seems to be so hard for you. Not the son of man himself, but the seventh angel, the seventh messenger is revealing to the public the son of man because it's left the shuck. It can't organize it. It's the grain itself again. That's who you are, the grain itself again that only listens to this voice. Amen. You love this message with all your heart? Are you happy for the revelation that God gives you? There is nothing else. Everything that was written in here, everything that was spoken is for what we're happening right now. It's for that bride, that shuck coming back, becoming the real grain again. And that we are. Can't say it enough from the beginning of time. They wanted to be living right, right where we are right now. Even during Jesus' time, they wanted to be living right now to see the coming. Everything's being manifested. He said it's all past wars and rumors of wars and all those things is going to happen. Nothing is hindering the coming of the Lord. Just us. So God, 
let us make ourselves ready. Amen? Let us bow our heads. We just want to tell him how much that we love him and appreciate him. How much would we thank him for the revelation of this message? What this message is to us, it's everything to us. Amen. We have seen the sign, we have heard the voice, and we believe it with all of our heart. Thank you, Lord. We know that you're here, Lord Jesus, but we want to make you feel so welcome tonight. And Lord, whatever we have need of tonight, Lord, give it to us. Open up our hearts like never before. May that revelation go deeper than it ever has been before. And Lord, let us touch the hem of your garment tonight. That Father, let this bride realize exactly who they are. And when they pray, let them believe. When they pray for one another, answer that prayer, Lord. We believe it, Lord. It's your word and it cannot fail. We have many that are sick. There's many re prayer requests that are here. And I want a special prayer request. I have a real burden for our sister, sister Rochelle Erickson. She's really sick in her body. The doctors would give her up, but not Dr. Jesus. He says to mention that name, New Hope. There's a new hope just to mention his name. He says when he say, I know a church. I know a group of people. Then there springs up new hope. We are that church. We believe we are that church. We are that bride. And whatever your request is, this one and whatever, He's here. And He's going to answer those requests. Every single one of them. Do you believe that tonight, church? Do you believe you're the bride? Do you believe anything you ask Him? You can have it if you believe it and have the faith. Help our unbelief, Lord Jesus. For truly you're here, Lord Jesus with us tonight. For he is here.